the wise think with the cycles, they hear the trade of flower of things, patient and move the key, the dangerous wisdom in their depths are strange. Lest man's frail days end the unknown should sing, drag like a ship by the bound Leviathan, end the abyss of the stupendous sea. Lo, how all shakes when the gods stay too near. So don't bring them gods very close. You sink like that, you see. All moves is in peril, anguish, torn, afeard. The hurrying aeons stumble on too swift to strength from heaven, surprise the imperfect earth, and veil its knowledge mote those unfit souls, unfit souls, obviously they will tremble and fall. The deities have screened the dreadful power, lucky that they have kept their power, dreadful power screen hidden. God hides his thought and even he seems to err. That is a statement made by death. God hides his thought and even he seems to err. Does God really hide his thought from us? <laughs> if he hides, he is hiding them for a purpose with an intention. But because we say that he is hiding the thought from us, therefore it appears that he is making a mistake, he is arranged somewhere. We are not able to move because we are not able to see his thought. Therefore we constantly keep on erring. Same to earth, he has made a mistake perhaps in the whole process. Firstly, God cannot hide in that sense at all his thought. We will not be able to see it, does not mean that he is hiding. The mother says, finally her formula is, Lord, whatever you will, succor to good. Senor, succor to good. Whatever you will, he has kept something hidden from her for a purpose, for an invitation. So that what is there is coming out more and more fully out of you. Therefore, it is kept hidden. He is not hurry by holding it back, you see. Be still and tardy in a slow, wise world. So his, his whole argument is go quietly, slowly, steadily, it will happen. Be still and tardy in the wise world. Mighty art thou with the dread goddess filled to whom thou cries to turn the dim truth. <laughs> Mighty art thou with the dread goddess filled. Yeah. Mighty art thou. He recognizes that she is really mighty. And that she is filled with the dread goddess, powerful, fierce goddess. She is filled, Savitri is filled with the force of that goddess. To whom, that goddess, to whom Savitri cried at dawn in the dim woods. See, the day of death, of Satyavan death has arrived. Savitri gets up early in the morning, does all her morning things. She gets ready. She goes and worships the image carved on a stone by her husband, Satyavan, Durga. He has sculpted the image in the forest, hermitage, where they are staying. She goes and worships Durga. Early morning, before the sunrise, she doing. This man is seeing right from above what is happening in the morning at six o'clock. You see, all you are. Mighty art thou with the dread goddess filled to whom thou crash at dawn in the dim woods, in the forest, in your hermitage, in your place, 
what had happened in the morning, you went to Durga, worshipped her, cried to her, I want your protection, I want your force, and this man is watching everything from above. You see, Yama. Yeah. 133.5. Savitri, on the fated day, gets up early in the morning. Then silently she rose and service done, bowed down to the great goddess simply carved by Satyavan upon a forest stone. So Satyavan is painted here as a sculptor. In the original story of Mahabharat, he is depicted as a painter. Chitrashva, Chitra. Here he has become a sculptor. And on his stone, he has carved the statue of Durga. What prayer she breathed, her soul and Durga knew. Her soul and Durga knew. That is the image carved by Satyavan on the forest stone. She is the one who protects against all difficulties. She gives the strength. Therefore, it's pretty appropriate. Sri Bandhu's earliest spellings of the Mahabharata characters were different than what we have here. Here, Durga is D O O R G A. Durga. In other place, you have got Durga. I am Durga, goddess of the proud and strong, and Lakshmi, queen, etc. But this canto, the book of death, was the draft which belongs to the early period, 1918 or so. 1918, the Arya period draft. So the character's name were according to the old spellings. Satyavan, yes, U T H. Ashwapoti, you see, like that, those spellings were there. So, in that canto, you have got D double O R G A, Durga. It belongs to that period, you see. But the point is, Savitri, what prayer she breathed, her soul and Durga knew. But here, this man also seems to know something. From above, he is watching what is happening at 6 o'clock in the morning in the Hermitage. So he has understood that she is praying to Durga for protection for her force. So that must have been her prayer. And he has somehow got the hint that that is the prayer. And it is with that prayer, now with that force of Durga, she is standing there in front of him. Mighty art thou with dead goddess filled. You are filled with the power of Durga. To whom thou cries at dawn in the dim mood. So he knows what she was crying for. So it means that he is coming fully prepared, fully armed to meet the power with which Savitri will be protected. In all his strength, he is not leaving anything behind to chance. He has watched what is happening, and therefore, when he is going to confront Savitri, he will come again with his full force there. He has to come then. And he is there with that full force to oppose the force which is there in the soul of Savitri now of Durga. To whom thou cries at dawn, the dim moon. Use not thy strength like the wild titan soul. Yes, you have got the strength, but don't be violent, don't be stormy, don't be like a titan to use the strength. Use it in the divine way. Touch not the seated lines, the ancient laws. Respect the calm of great established kings. That is his 
whole argument. Yes, you are filled up with the power, but respect also the law here. Respect also the law here. Use not the strength like a white titan to This is remarkable. He is already watching from above what is happening on the <laughs> earth, you see. That is important. Now, this worshipping of Durga on the battlefield is an important thing. I already told you earlier that it is she who gives the victory on the battle. And the who Savitri approaches Durga and worships her in the morning. I am going now to meet my enemy, your enemy. So be with me. She is going with that. In the story of Mahabharat, as I told you earlier, Arjuna had lost all his courage. He had become so dejected that he refused to fight. And then follows big sermon of 700 shlokas. <laughs> and then he accepts what the teacher, the guide, his charioteer tells him, Krishna, take up the weapon and kill the enemy. Arjuna is now ready to fight the enemy. He has picked up the bow. So at that point of time, Krishna tells him, look, you are ready to fight. But first, please get down from the chariot. Get down from the chariot and offer your worship to Durga. Offer your worship to Durga. I am there, all right, but go and offer your worship to Durga. And then come and pick up your weapon. That is what Arjuna does. He gets down from the chariot, steps down, worships her, prays to her, and then he is ready to fight. The victory is then sure. She is the giver of victory. Same thing happened in the case of Ramayana, as I told you. On the day when Rama is going to fight Ravana, he does that yajna, and the yajna is an offering to Durga, Goddess Durga. They were short of one lotus. 108 lotuses are required. They had only 107. But Rama's eyes are like lotus. Rajiva lochanam, Rajiva lotus, lochana eyes. So he picks up one of his eyes and puts it in the yajna. Rajiva lochanam. Whatever sight he has, it is that sight now which is offered the divine so that it becomes a divine sight. He has offered his eye, means he has given up his sight, his way of thinking, seeing, doing things. All right, now it is with you. And then when that yajna is done, Ravana is killed by Rama, you see. So the goddess Durga is the goddess of battlefield and victory. That is what is here. Use not the strength like the titan, like the wild titan. So touch not the seated lines. So the lines are fixed. This is the way things are happening. You follow them. The ancient laws, I am the upholder of the law. They have been there all along, you see. Yama. Yama means death. Yama means law. I am the law. So all the laws are fixed. Cosmic laws are there. Don't break the laws. Follow them laws. Respect the calm of great established things. They have been there. You pay proper homage to them. Respect them. Don't be violent. Don't be tightened. 